Good evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Jay Pushkar. He's Mike Fenner. And Mike, it was certainly a bittersweet night for Erie High and not to mention we'll have Tom Decker later on in the show. Yeah, the Royals learning on Thursday that they will be playing their remaining home games following tonight on mm -hmm. Saturdays, making tonight their final game under the Friday Night Lights for this 2021 season. And to Veterans Memorial Stadium we go between Erie High and Brashear. Opening kickoff for the Bulls. And they're going to field the kick inside their own 20-yard line. And then here comes Daquan Griffin. He's going to fight the ball with his own teammate. And then he turns on the Jets, comes near side, hurdles a potential tackle, and then gets to midfield. But then you saw the flag come flying in. So Brashear has to start at the 25-yard line. And on the very first play from scrimmage, they hit the home run play. Brandon Pizzell able to connect with Griffin for the 75-yard touchdown. Just like that, 6-0 Bulls. On the ensuing kickoff, the Royals trying to make magic happen, but they cough the ball up at midfield. And so just in a matter of minutes, Brashear thinking two scores. And on that drive, it's Pizzell to Griffin. And Griffin just does the rest, going 39 yards to the house. Bulls leading 12 to nothing. Erie counters right back, though. Busy, busy first quarter of special teams action. As the Royals redeem themselves, Cree Thompson fields the kickoff and then he takes off, has one person to beat, but then gets tripped up inside the 20 yard line. That eventually would set up this 33 yard field goal as the Royals would get on the board, but points were tough to come by for Erie High as Brashear goes on to win this one, the final 26 to 12. Mike Mishler's Cathedral Prep Ramblers on the road in Ohio. They battle Solon, thanks to former Jet 24 sports director Craig Smiley with the assist here, his alma mater taking on the Ramblers. Second quarter, prep trailing 8-7, to seven, but after a fourth down stop, Mike Parks, the third down handoff, pickup of 25 yards on the run. And then same drive, Carter Barnes airs it out. Tyson Simon skying over two defenders, hauls it in inside the 20. From there, it's Barnes getting across the goal line on his own. Prep takes the 14-8 lead. After a Comets touchdown, the Ramblers strike right back on the ensuing drive. Barnes to Parts, and that makes it 27-15 eventually at the break as Prep goes on to get the win. 44-35 over Solon to move to 4-0 on the season. In Region 5, Troy Budaszewski's Harbor Creek Huskies hosting Meadville. Huskies down 21-7 at the half, and in the third, the Bulldogs defense coming up with a big play here. Third down, Toby Charlton is sacked. Justice Esser and Jordan Young with a takedown for the Dogs. After a mishandled punt, it's Griffin Bazell making the Huskies pay. The goal line touchdown tote, 27-7 Bulldogs. Meadville scores again in the second half. Kalan Simmons trying to make defenders miss and does so to the tune of a 34-7 lead there. And in the fourth quarter, one more time for Meadville. Bazell on another run here as Meadville picks up the 40-7 win in Region 5 over Harbor Creek as the Bulldogs run away from the Huskies in the second half. To watch Kalan and Griff do what they do on both sides of the ball, it's what we've come to expect from both of them. And they deliver every Friday night. They're both really good athletes. They stepped, the offensive line stepped up for sure. They gave us great, great holes, great blocks. It was a great game overall. It was a giant statement game. You know, it was the uh, second region game. You know, we had to put a mark on the region and let them know, you know, we're still top dogs. You know, nobody's above us. We had to play hard. We fixed our team. We was hitting blocks. Everybody was working together. There were no attitudes. It was just perfect, you know, team chemistry. Let's head to Corey now where the Beavers were hosting Fairview on homecoming night. Opening drive, Fairview going for it on 4th and 13, and it pays off. Tyler Corbin rolling out and throws a strike to Logan Fazeo. Picks up the first down. A few plays later, another fourth down opportunity for the Tigers. On the two-yard line, Jared Genuso takes it in himself on the sweep. He's in there for the score. To the second quarter we go. The Beavers looking to tie things up. Hunter Savitz get, takes the handoff, barrels his way into the end zone from five yards out. Later in the quarter, it's Corbin looking to pass. Hits Genuso, and this one would go for another score. Fairview. After the game being tied at 20 apiece, goes on to beat the Beavers tonight, taking it 34 to 20. Great game out to Northeast for the Great Pickers. Homecoming against Fort LaBeouf in the first quarter here. No score. Northeast with the football. Jackson Humes back to pass, and he's intercepted by LaBeouf's Dominic Stearns, who comes up with a turnover. Bison get going on offense now, and it's Tristan Harris taking off down the left sideline. And this one going for six, 55 yards, 7 nothing as the Bison get on the scoreboard first here on the road. In the second quarter now, still 7-0. Fort LaBeouf, another turnover on defense. It's a rollout pass that's deflected, 
and picked off by Tristan Harris there defensively. A nice defensive play coming back though for Northeast in the backfield. A tackle for loss on the counter play. Logan Fortin gets there to make the big TFL for the Pickers. Late in the second though, LaBeouf back on the scoreboard. Justin Lucian going around right end and a 21-yard touchdown run makes it 14-0 LaBeouf. And finally before the half, Harris scoring one more time here. Another run from beyond midfield as Fort LaBeouf stays perfect. They roll to a 42-6 road victory at Northeast as the Bison get it done again. At Mercyhurst University's Saxon Stadium, Mercyhurst Prep hosting Girard. A wild finish to the first half. Yellow Jackets trailing 14 to 6 with less than two minutes to go in the half. And what a great return by Gunner Bax, taking just about everybody to midfield before being brought down. Just kept turning those legs. Then it's Carson Stevens rolling out of the pocket, finds Zach Lowe, but he gets popped. The ball falls into the hands of Stephen Foster, and what a play! And moving the chains. A couple plays later, Stevens somehow avoids the sack, and then he just launches this one down the field, and Lowe hauls it in, setting up a first and goal, but the time keeps ticking down. Then it's Lowe finishing the drive just in time. Jackets trailing 14 to 12 at the break. We'll pick it up in the third quarter. Same score, Gerard forced to punt, but they muff the mishandled exchange. Mercyhurst prepped in business on the ensuing possession. David Baum wants to throw, but then just steps up in the pocket and decides, you know what, I'm gonna do this myself. Takes wow. it all the way to the end zone. What a move, and then he got a little tweaked there on the leg, but nonetheless, he's able to get into the end zone, and it's Mercyhurst prep over Gerard by the final of 28 to 12. And now we'll send it over to our third member of the team, Mr. Tom Decker. Tom, take it away. Hey, thanks a lot, Jay. Northwestern and Sagertown were back on the field tonight after both teams were off last week. For the Panthers, they've not been able to play the past two weeks due to COVID-19 protocols. As for Northwestern, they were looking for a little home field advantage to remain unbeaten on the season. Scoreless in the first, that snap gets by Ryan Tool. He picks it up and he chucks it deep. Eric Steinle making the leaping catch right there for the first down. Steinle would set a single game record for the Wildcats tonight with 208 receiving yards. A few plays later, Gage Hanasek Brockett heads up the middle for the score to give Northwestern the early lead. Next possession for the Cats, Ben Campbell takes the handoff, rumbling, and literally people were bouncing off that dude. He picks up another first down for the Cats. Tool would get back to work. This time he tosses a perfect pass to Lloyd Fountain. Check this out. Catches him in stride over the shoulder. That is good for six more. This one was pretty. Tool set a single game record himself. He passed for 316 yards. Northwestern rolls Sagertown 48 to 12. Up next, we head to General McLean, where the Lancers were up 20 to nothing after the first against Conneaut area. The Lancers not taking their foot off the gas. Dylan Cheater looking deep. He connects with Eric Salmonson for the 36 yard score. Next possession for GM, it's John Amon at QB now, and he too is looking for that end zone. Owen Martin. Check out this catch falling into the end zone. That made it 34-0 Lancers. And there was still a little more time for yet another score. Skylar Cavendish is going to take the handoff, and he is gone. 58 yards in a cloud of dust. Boy, GM was clicking on all cylinders tonight. They down cash 54-8. Gentlemen, that's it for me. Back to you. Thanks a lot.